Hi, Steph from the BMW DIY Guy. My project today is a really simple one, but I feel a really important one for those of you with the N54 and the N55 motors, like in my F32. We're going to install an oil catch can into the motor. And actually, you'll see it's going to be really, really simple, but it's really, really important. What can happen really commonly with the N54 and the N55 motors is that you'll get oil that comes up and comes through the injectors. So you're going to get oil that coats all of that over time and eventually will build up and it will have to be cleaned. There's a couple of different options for cleaning. It's not cheap. It's not necessarily hard. In some places you can do it yourself, but if you can avoid it to begin with, I would do so. So what we're going to do is we're going to install an oil catch can that's going to take all of that residue off. Now, that won't address any buildup that you have already, but it will help prevent it from, prevent it from occurring in the future. So, this is the oil catch can from Burger Tuning. I'm really excited to install this into my 435. Now, I'm going to give you one clue before we go out to the garage. I actually redid this video after I did the work because of something I ran into, so I'm going to call it out straight away. The intake tube that comes up on the top of your motor, it's got insulation on it. It's the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to take it off. When I took mine off and you kind of, you work the clip off and I took it off, bang, the pipe immediately cracked. It is a plastic pipe that, ex that is exposed over a long period of time to a lot of heat and it can get very, very fragile. I'll show you in the video that you're going to see from here how I broke mine and how to clean it up. But I wanted to say from the very get-go, so if you're watching this video on how to install this yourself, check this first and be ready to replace that tube. It's not hard. It's not actually not that expensive, but be ready to do so. So you don't be in a position where you break it like I did and you have to go run and go get it. If it's late at night or you don't have another car or uh, you have to get it from a dealership or, or, or order it, it's going to take you a long time. So check first. The very first thing you want to do is grab onto that tube, kind of manipulate it. If it cracks at all, if, you, if it doesn't feel like a, like a corrugated plastic tube and is moving fine through that insulation, you're probably okay. But if, it, if you hear it crack at all, immediately get the part number, which you'll see listed in the description below. Order it. It's not that expensive, so you have one on hand when you pull it off because it's probably either breaking or broken. I actually found when I peeled the insulation back on my hose that I had some oil spots in it. So mine was already cracked through. Uh, and so this replacement was due anyway. So be really, really careful when you do that. I redid the intro to my video. So to make sure to call it out very first thing before you do any of the work, go and check that tube. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out to the garage. Let's talk about the work that we're going to do and work through it. This is really simple. It shouldn't take you all that long. All right, so we're out here at the car. And we're going to start simply by return, by removing the engine vanity cover. So you just pull up. It's on post. Mine is a little bit loose right now. So go ahead and just pull that off and set it aside safely. Now, I'm going to have you check something before I did. So whenever I do a project, I always walk through the steps if I can. I make sure that I know each step that I'm doing along the way and understand each step. So in the process of doing this, doing this, I already broke something and I want to show you first before anything else. So potentially if you need to buy a new part, you can do it before you break it like I did. So we've got our crankcase breather hose here, which is what we're going to take off. It has four little clips that sit here right, right on the top. You take those clips and you can take a screwdriver, a pick tool. I'm going to use my plastic trim tool. I really like these because they're really good plastic on plastic. I don't like metal on plastic. So I was making sure I understood how these little clips come off. Super, super simple, right? So I was checking that before I do this process, before I film it, I pulled it off and pulled up gently and my breather hose broke right here. I could hear it crunch. Now you're like, how do I not have a broken one? Because I've got a new one. I just went and bought this. So my breather hose broke. So let me grab my old one here. See, here's my old one. I pulled up on it and bang broke clean off and the plastic as you can hear is completely brittle and it's completely brittle down through down through the rest of it so what i would recommend you do before you take this off get a hold of your breather hose and kind of just squeeze at it maybe manipulate it a little bit right you can hear it crunch now i also think as you look at the insulation layers in here I think mine might actually have been leaking for a while. I think I might have had some hairline cracks in it because I've got traces of oil on the inside of this insulation that was not there before it broke off completely, right? So I think mine actually has been kind of
kind of shot, as you can hear, for a while, okay? So here's what I recommend doing. Before you do this project, check this hose. I'll have the part, the correct part number for this for the N55 motor. Check your motor to make sure it's right for you. But I'm gonna have the part number for this listed in uh, the description of the video. You know, move it around a little bit, manipulate it a little bit, check to make sure that this hose is intact, okay? Because if it's not, or you hear it crunch a little bit, go buy another one, order another one. Um, if you have to drive your car, well, you have to drive your car. Uh, but go get another one and you don't don't <laughs> don't be like me where I'm like it broke off completely I'm completely completely hosed. Okay, so you take your plastic trim tool you work these four little clips up You pull the hose back and away. So now your crankcase breather hose is set and ready to go We're gonna put the catch can right here You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket to loosen up this bolt because this is where the little mounting plate for our catch can is gonna go and our catch can is going to fit right into this space right here. Your, your breather hose will bend over into the catch can, just like this. So let me grab those parts. I'll show you what those next steps are. But all in all, this is really super simple, especially if you check this hose first and you don't have to make a run to go buy a part like I just did. Okay, so as we, as we move on and I wanna show you what I've done, um, I wanna to touch on one thing here really, really quickly. So if you do need to change your breather hose, this is the bottom. Uh, there is a single T20 Torx screw that holds this into place and it just simply pushes into <coughs> uh, your intake manifold or your intake uh, tube. So it simply just pushes in. There's one uh, T20. There's also an electrical connection right here. It kind of curls down and around and you'll see if you, if you do have to pull this, you'll see the way it kind of twists around and the plug on is, is keyed and only goes in one way. So if you do need to take this out, you just take a T20, you take it out, make sure not to drop the screw. And then you can pull this out, unplug it, plug in the new one and, and stick it right back into place and then you can bend it around. And as you can see, it's super crunchy, right? Okay, so I've got the new one into place and I wanted to show what I've done. This takes a little bit of of finagling to get into this room. So um, the pictures from Berger show this sitting back all the way at a 90 degree angle. And I think just the way that my hoses all sit and all of this sit, I can't get it to be quite at a 90 degrees. So you've got a 13 millimeter socket here. So I took this screw out. I took the mounting bracket, screwed it back in gently enough that it can still move. And then you've got your four millimeter Torx uh, little, little bolts here on the top to secure the catch can itself. So I kind of work to get the catch can into place. Be careful of these hoses. So this top one or this front one is flexible. This back one is hard plastic. And if you really ream on it, you can break it. And these are this is your um, vacuum line that comes all the way over to the top uh, feeder off of the top of your radiator. It goes here to your expansion tank. It's, you could break this if you yard up on this really hard. Don't do it. So be careful. The other thing that I had is also there's a wiring harness that comes up right here that kind of goes around this bend right here. And I found this that was in the way as well. So I took the wiring harness and pushed it down. So I could show each one of those steps. You know, I could take this back out and I could show each one of those steps, but I think you can see exactly what I did. Um, and now that I've got it into place, I want to keep it here. So as I was kind of test fitting, I found a place where it fits. So you can see this plate is on here. It's not quite 90 degrees like, like in the instruction document from Berger, but that's okay. It's sitting right and right in place. Um, and then I, I've secured it loosely with the four millimeter torque or the four millimeter Allen bolt here on top. And the 13 is just loose. So you can see the can is now sitting in place. And I really think I can, I can tighten this down. So I'll take this, I'll tighten down the 13, keep this in place now because I think it's in a good position. And I think there's enough variation and this motor is so tight, I really don't see a way that I can get it all the way further back without these hoses being um, significantly out of the way. So, but I, I think it's really gonna be okay here. It's not touching the motor. Um, it, is, it is in real tight right here. So I think this is tight. So I can tighten this down to make sure that it stays in place as I, as I manipulate the rest of this. So now really what you wanna do is get your hoses on. They're pretty self-explanatory. Your uh, big hose with clips goes on the outside. It's the only one side it can go on. It's got these big huge clips on it and you see it clips right tight into place. And I'm gonna turn it to get into a good angle. Okay, and then you're gonna take your supplied hose 
There's a small side and a big end, small end and a big end. Small end goes onto the catch can. Just work that into place right there. And the big end back on firmly onto your connection here, right there. Okay, which is where you took the original hose off from. So that right there is all straight in place, just like that. And, and I've got one of the uh, T -T T4s in right now, one of the four millimeter Allens in right now. I'm gonna put the other in as I turn this a little bit because it's now threaded where I can get it in. So that's set. So this is all plugged in. So the only thing that really you have to do now is you're gonna have to trim your cover a little bit. So you see the cover is gonna hit the top of the catch can right here. So you're gonna to wanna to trim this edge back right through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I wanna make sure my cover sits down nice and flush. So I'm gonna take a pencil, I'm gonna mark down this edge and down this side to clear, to clear the hose. So you're gonna just scallop this front edge off a little bit. So I'm gonna take a pencil, I'm gonna mark it, then I'm gonna score it with uh, my shop knife or an X-Acto blade score it along here and then I'll get this plastic cut out really, really nicely. I'll take a look at it if I need if I need to, I'll do it with my Dremel and I'll show you that. But so let me take the cover back off. It looks like I'm really gonna need to take off probably about half of the depth of this. So I'm gonna come across nice and neatly right across here and all the way back to about here and I'll mark it with a pencil. I'll show you that. Okay, so I've marked it and it's about the depth of the foam on the inside. and. Um, if you look at the instruction guide, you can see that as well. You can see a little bit of the edge of the foam when they've cut this away. So this insulating foam that you can see here a little bit, it's about the depth of that foam is how far you want to go. So I've marked it here about halfway uh, down, down the depth of this, marked it down the side, marked a good distance here to take off from the hoses. And I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to score this. And uh, see if this will snap out. If it doesn't, I'll just use my Dremel and make a nice neat cut. So I'm just gonna cut the cover next and we'll, we're almost done. Okay, so my cover's all cut and it really is about the depth of the foam and it's about half of the depth of this edge and you can see the edge that I've cut back. I actually cut it back about uh, maybe even as much of an inch too far. I, I don't think you'll be able to tell and it'll look fine. But nice smooth edge. I ended up using my Dremel because it's a pretty hard plastic. I think that you could score it uh, with a knife and really get a good deep cut and then start to break it off because it's a very, um, it's a strong but kind of brittle plastic. So I think you could break it off for me in my case um, because I had access to a Dremel. I wanted to cut it nice and neat and clean and quickly. So I went ahead and used my Dremel. And then the, if you do use a Dremel, keep in mind, even with the right blade on it, you're going to melt the plastic a little bit. So I had a little bit of melted plastic around the edges and I just took my knife and cleaned that up really nicely so it looks good. So as we slide this into place, get back on the back post, just like that, and it fits. So now, got a nice clean edge right along this, uh, uh, along the front edge with the new catch can. Got an edge where it's not digging back into the new hose at all and everything is nice and intact and straight. So all in all, at this point, we're done. Make sure that all, all of your bolts are tight. If you've unhooked anything, like for example, these two runner feeds across the top are, are, have been moved around a little bit, so they're sitting out of their clips. So I'm gonna straighten those out a little bit, make sure that they're where they should be. Um, my wiring harness, I snapped back into place here because it's on a little clip right here and I pushed it back into place, so it's set. So really the only difference I've got at this point is that this isn't quite at this straight across angle. It's just tipped up a little bit. And that's probably the way my hoses are. So everything's put all back together. Um, again, keep in mind with your breather hose, be really careful with that. But at this point, we're all done. And as you can see, this really isn't a hard project. Only takes a couple of simple tools to do. A uh, 13 millimeter socket, a uh, four millimeter Allen uh, on this, and then a knife or a good cutting tool or a Dremel, and you're good to go. Again, I'm just gonna caution, be really careful with that breather hose. Don't break it like I did. All right, so all done. As you can see, this really wasn't that hard. It takes a few basic, simple tools to get the work done. Hopefully you didn't have to re replace your tube like I did, but that's okay. Even if you did, it's something that will wear out in time. So if you had to replace it, it was due to be changed anyway. So as you can see, this really isn't a hard thing and actually will add a real advantage to your car to have that oil catch can that's gonna help to keep it from coating in for your injectors and through your valves, which is a really good thing. And the general rule is 
unscrew that, that catch can and uh, clean it out probably about every oil change, which is what I'm going to do. So every time I go in for an oil change and I'm going to just take it off, clean it out, put it back on line, I'm going to be good to go. And I'm going to help maintain my car over time. You know, I'm pushing my car like a lot of enthusiasts do. So this is something for me that I see as a really great way to help me maintain it in ways that I might not be able to easily measure, you know, of a little bit better horsepower, a little bit better, you know, gas mileage or oil change differences. But what it is going to do is going to help the life of my car long term. And it's also going to help when I deal with that maintenance on how you can get oil residue that builds up into your valves. So really, really important. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, definitely give me a shout. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. Really important. I've got a lot more important projects and, and videos coming up, and I'd love to show them to you. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.